taking everything that we loved about the original film, T2 not only smashed audiences' expectations, but took visual effects to new heights. How did this all happen? Well, come with us if you want to learn. In 1984, James Cameron's The Terminator blew away expectations and became a real cult hit. On a budget of a measly 6.4 million, The Terminator had introduced audiences to Skynet, killer robots, and an apocalyptic future, making an amazing $78.3 million at the box office. Sarah Connor? Yes. For all the negatives involved in making a sequel, uh, you have positives, and one of the positives is if you can take that that initial programming that the audience has from the other film, and then do little twists and turns on it, then they realize that there's a little bit of fun involved. A sequel was always inevitable, but it would take many years for it to formulate. So why didn't Cameron strike at the property whilst it was hot? Well, the answer is technology. The T-1000 liquid metal terminator concept was an idea originally conceived for the original film, but due to the limitations of the effects technology at the time, it was scrapped. Cameron looked at potentially using claymation to provide the effect, but wasn't convinced it would be able to look as realistic as required. It wasn't until 1989 when the wheels started turning again during the production of The Abyss where the water tentacle effect proved that computer graphics technology had reached a level whereby the T-1000 concept could finally be achieved. Now the only thing standing in their way was the intellectual property rights. After their success together with Total Recall, Schwarzenegger convinced Carlico head Myra Kassar to bid for the rights to the franchise having to buy it out from Terminator's producer, Galen Hurd, who in the years since the first film, had become Cameron's ex-wife. Consider that a divorce. With the rights all sorted, Terminator 2 could start production, with a budget of $102 million, making it the most expensive film ever made. But boy, does it show! Terminator 2 is filled to the brim with amazing and revolutionary effects. To bring to life over 300 optical and mechanical effects shots, four major effects houses were tasked with a variety of pieces to this grand puzzle. Fantasy 2 returned after providing the miniatures and the effects for the future war sequence from the original film, bringing a new sense of scale and detail to the apocalyptic battleground. Forward productions were responsible for the effects shots of the nuclear holocaust that Sarah experiences in her dreams, and even considered a dancer in a mushroom cloud costume to perform the explosion. The heavy lifting of the film was done by ILM and Stan Winston Studios. Stan Winston Studios were responsible for all the practical effects and makeup seen in the film. A number of puppets and models were used for all different types of damage the T-1000 receives throughout the film. Each one earning its own nickname, Splashhead, Donuthead, Cleave Man and Pretzel Man. Even small effects like the T-1000's bullet holes were done practically. Each rubber bullet splash was folded in on itself and held in place via remote control. Each of those bullet splashes were then attached to a piece of body armour that actor Robert Patrick would wear under a pre-perforated police shirt. When the character received each shot to the chest, the effects team would trigger the release of the splash and it would open up like a flower. The final frozen T-1000 model was sprayed with shredded silver Christmas tree fur to give it that shine, and then blown apart by air cannons from the roof to ensure that the debris spread out along the ground as per James Cameron's request. Stan Winston Studios worked tirelessly to rip apart the T-1000, but it was the job of Dennis Murin and the team at ILM to patch him back together. T2 featured the most comprehensive use of CG since The Last Starfighter, but altogether the CG effects account for only 3.5 minutes of the film. But it's the 3.5 minutes that changed filmmaking forever and signaled the start of ILM's move from models and miniatures to CG. Special effects are one thing, but T2 is also filled with amazing stunt work. This helicopter shot, the camera crew refused to shoot the shot on the grounds of safety, so Cameron himself shot this stunt on the back of a production vehicle. No CGI here folks, 
This was just good old fashioned stunt work and fancy flying. We could talk for hours about the making of this film. There's so much amazing work both in front and behind the camera on T2. With the upcoming theatrical re-release, now's the perfect time to check out this amazing piece of filmmaking the only way it should be experienced, on the big screen. Hasta la vista, baby. My name's Ryan and this is the making of Terminator 2 Judgment Day. If you love this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button and comment below with what you want to see us take you behind the scenes of next time with the making of.